It is uh, so good to be with you, and um, we we uh, we're excited for this morning. We've had had some fun. Now we've got a uh, a digital picture that frame that scrolls through our family, friends, and supporting churches that we show in Asia. And there's a picture that we have of you guys. And uh, yeah, this is who we pray for. Extra prayer. So, like, we, we've we've adjusted our digital, uh, cal- uh, like, digital frame settings so it lingers on this one for a longer period of time. <laughs> uh, uh, Some extra help. <laughs> extra oh help goodness. needed. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. we're Darcy and Leanne McAllister, and we're some of your global workers. And uh, we just want to thank you so much for your support. Um, it just means a great deal. Yeah, it's quite something. Like, uh, you know, we launched to Asia in January, and, and as you may know, we, we are three months, three months, three months, three months, as recommended by our team, mm-hmm. and uh, three months in, in Canada, three months in Asia, and, and launching in the middle of a pandemic, knowing that there are people who are praying for you, who are with you, is a significant thing. It is... Uh, your your prayers and your support are more valuable than you realize. Yeah. We uh, we moved to Asia January eighth or so, and uh, two and a half weeks later, COVID nineteen hit our city, and uh, yeah, and then we were due to come back in March just as COVID nineteen was hitting here, and then we went back to Asia in July just as the second wave was hitting there. And then, yes, we're back here. <laughs> as, so as somehow we're kind of out of sync, I think. I th- yeah, we I think need we to ne- think this through. We anyway. do need so uh, we're involved in working with leaders. Mm-hmm. Uh, leaders are our passion, developing leaders, working with leaders. And we believe in healthy marriages and healthy families and seeing people flourish in that way. Um, Leanne laid something called the Zoe Network, uh, which started out just in Canada, but is now starting to make its way into other go nations global. to go global, <laughs> um, which is really c- cool. And Zoe Network is about activating women and men into God's mission. And it started out just as, as for women. Mm-hmm. And our, our local church pastor in, in Fort Langley uh, came to us a, about a year ago and said, Darcy, uh, like the women in our church are really getting... Well, they're leaving the men in the dust, I think, is what he said. I was, try- I was trying to think of a nicer way to say that, Leanne. Uh, and obviously, I didn't think of that fast enough. Uh, but yeah, essentially that. And so we've, we've introduced the concept of Zoe for Men in yeah. the Zoe Network. And Pastor Joe actually is part of a pilot project to see if we can get material that will help activate the yeah. men. We're, we're just so passionate about people understanding that you know like people look at us like we're missionaries like oh you're the professional christians like you're the like really serious ones that would go to move to asia but here's the thing god's mission is all around us it's everywhere i mean we spent some time in your cute little town and god's mission is is here and each one of us has a part to play in that mission. And so, yeah, through Zoe, we really want to help people understand that and move forward. In Asia, Darcy uh, directs one of our longtime uh, PAOC ministries there that was started in the 1950s by a lady named Sadie McLeod. I don't know if anyone recognizes um, that name, but uh, she started to minister to refugees um, coming out of mainland mainland uh to our city and so within that ministry are bible colleges universities a high school all of that all with leaders and so we we really uh work with those leaders in those areas so uh and together we kind of serve into each other's area (laughs) and it's it's a lot of fun we are together all the all the time all the time All, all the time like like all the time yeah I went to Walmart last week, and I didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> but we do pretty pretty good. So, um, but yeah, th- in the last eighteen months, I can't believe it because we were just minding our own business in Canada, 
in sort of a sort of a semi comfortable life. And we eh? blew up our lives. We totally did. And you quit your job. Yeah. And I You moved from a paid job to a support raising job. Yes. And then we decided to move to a city that is in the news pretty much every day. And it's a city that has had a lot of political crises in the last 18 months or so. So picture uh, going to church, uh, like we went to church, we shared at church, and then got on the ferry to go back to our city, and we landed, and you're looking around, and you're going, why, why are there no taxis or buses here? What, what's, what's going on? And you open your phone, and it's like, oh, there's a protest, and the protest is just on the next street. Oh. And so we're walking in the back alley and along the street. And by protest, we mean millions of people. And our apartment is on the other side. Of the street. Yeah, about four and a half kilometers away. And so we're hoofing it. We are and booking it down the side street. And at one point, I'm like, Darcy, there's something wrong with my eyes, my eyes. And he goes, Leanne, that's tear gas. And I'm like, and this is where we live. <laughs> So we, uh, so we just, we made our way, and, and every cross street, we looked to see if the protest was still there, and we finally saw a gap, and so we went in between the riot police and the protesters, and ran across, and uh, went to McDonald's. <laughs> Where we supersized our fries, because and we... And stress <laughs> ate, <laughs> and we so confess that to you, <laughs> we will try not to, do, like, I, uh, like, Joe, I feel, like, I feel bad confessing that, but I feel like I, we just have to be honest. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we've done three quarantines so far in 2020. We have one coming up uh, soon, and it's just, it's been a lot. Can anyone say it's been a lot? Because, and I guess, like, we, we, we came up with this, this phrase, everybody's got your, their hard this yeah. year, you know? Like, it, there's, it, there's stuff that we've all had to overcome. But in the middle of it all, we have heard God speak to us, and we've seen him move. And that's all we need. Um, in early in 2020, we decided that we were going to, we've been married 31 years, and we have never read the Bible in its entirety together. And Cause, so we... Cause because we were doing our own thing, and we're now we're as we're thing. as uh, in a year where we're forced to be together, we're going <laughs> to do more together. We might as well read the Bible <laughs> together, but it's been an amazing thing to do together. And uh, you know, we went through the Old Testament and really parked on um, some text here from Joshua three five and six. It says Joshua told the people, "Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you." And Joshua said to the priests, take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. So to kind of set the stage here, after 40 years of wandering the desert, being led by the Lord, led by Moses, um, seeing an entire generation pass away without being able to enter the promised land, it is now finally time to go in. Joshua is a new leader, um, and, and rather than being this exciting march into this new territory, they have a major obstacle in front of them because the Jordan River is in front of them, and it is in flood. And then across the Jordan, you have cities like Jericho with massive walled defenses, and it's, it's not looking good. And here's the thing. The people would have heard about the plagues of the past in Egypt, they would have heard about the crossing of the Red Sea, but they themselves had never experienced it. So now it's their turn. It's their turn to step up. And, and it's time to go in. And, and God, whose miracles they've heard about but never seen. Well, no, they saw miracles in the desert too. Yeah. yeah. But here they are, and he makes them wait a bit more. Yeah, in fact, he... God told the people of Israel to wait three days on the shores of the Jordan River. And so you, you, they're sitting, <laughs> and it's like, okay, we just want you to wait there. And you're looking at this river just, in flood. Just look at it. Uh, and, and nothing's changing. In fact, the floodwaters are, are still there. So they, they saw a rushing river, swollen with spring rains, laying in front of them. And they must have asked the question, how can we ever get across mm -hmm. this river? Now, the issue was spiritual. 
The priests actually led the way, not the soldiers or Joshua. This was a spiritual issue more than a physical is issue. It was a do you trust me or not issue. Do you trust God with this obstacle? Because after 40 years of wandering the desert where all the trust issues of the Israelites were exposed. Like the parents of this group are the, are the people who, who complained. And they would, they would say, we should have gone back to Egypt. Like, and they'd seen, they'd seen the, the crossing of the Red Sea. They'd seen all these miracles. But they're saying, we should have gone back to Egypt. And they're complaining. Uh, they, and now the kids are here at this new beginning where God had said, be strong and courageous. And they're faced with the issue, do we trust God or not? Yeah. And God made it even more of a trust fall game. Because rather than Moses' rod touching the, the water, which is how, what happened at the crossing of the Red Sea, uh, the Bible says that the priests were invited to go and stand in the water before it would stop. Now, that sounds a, a bit harder, actually. You know, like, he, here are these desert dwellers. They've not seen a whole lot of water. They've not done swimming lessons as kids. Um, they're, they're marching into the water, and you can't see where the water right. stops. Like, so th they get in, and we, it doesn't say how deep they, they got in, but they got into the river, and all of a sudden, the water s is stopped upstream. And so the water stops, but for all the rest of the community, here they are, and they, they're supposed to cross this river, and they don't know why the water has stopped, how long it's stopped, is it going to come rushing back in? Like, what's, what's going to happen? This, before you go thinking, oh, these, this is such a nice story, like, <laughs> picture mama bears walking across there with... They're little, uh, little They're kids. Babies, yeah. Like, I've met a f one. <laughs> she's and, scary. And <laughs> she's, she would have had some choice words for Joshua, <laughs> let me tell yeah. you. Like, what are you, what are you yeah. putting my children through? But they're invited to, to trust. And God came through. And it set the tone for the taking of the promised land. And I actually like that they didn't know the complete picture before they, they crossed the Jordan River. They knew that they were to take one step and then God. One step and then God. Which seems to me like is this walk of faith that we're doing here. Yeah. It's because we don't see the complete picture. and we, It's like we're always bargaining with God, saying you have to show us how this is going to unfold, how this is going to end, but that's just not how it works and you know they had the whole night to wait and guess and murmur amongst themselves you know those those mama bears complaining mm -hmm. uh about joshua and you know I, I think to myself what was their mindset was it agitation was it anticipation were they excite exciting excitement excited you know what i'm talking yeah. about or were they full of dread but i think the collective question they would have been asking themselves is do we have what it takes i actually think this this covid 19 thing and and the, the 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 worldwide church is an opportunity to say do we have what it takes do we believe that god is who he says he is do we believe that we are who he says we are See, that, that moment of initial call, like I think of our call to go to Asia 18 months ago, maybe 24 months ago now. But that, that moment of that call and then that first faith step, it, it varies in length. Sometimes it's a moment where God asks you to do something quickly and you do it and boom. But sometimes there, there's a night or two or perhaps even a year or longer, but through that moment, it's a time of clarification about who God is, about who we are, and then it's a decision where we answer the question, do you trust me or not? Now, there's a beautiful part of this passage of Scripture that it, it, it's different than North America. In North America, we are all about the rights of the individual, and we make our decisions as individuals. But here, this was a community decision. This was the nation uh, of Israel. And I, I, I love that they were all invited to prepare together. And somehow community and togetherness matters. With our churches here in Canada, 
and in Asia, we're experiencing pressure to face our situations alone. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in our lives, the linking, up our, our, of, the linking up of our arms together with others has been incredibly important. Mm-hmm. In September, I, I got up early and I was to go to a, a really important meeting in, in the downtown of our city, and it was a meeting where I felt like I was way over my head. And so I got on the, I got on the subway, and just as I was getting on the subway, my phone buzzed, and it was one of our Canadian friends, pastor of a little church in the Rockies, and she said, I was praying for you this morning, and I felt led to ask, what yeah. mountains are you facing that we can pray for you for? Yeah. Instant response. This is the mountain that I'm facing this morning. Can you pray? We are praying right now. Well, needless to say, my perspective on the meeting changed. It was like God was just reminding yeah. me through our greater community that he's got this. He's in this, and he's in this with us t- together. Right. So we can, we can face COVID and political change and global yeah. events together. We can strengthen and encourage each other to spur each other on. And, and this has actually been a really special part of this year. Like, you know, we've... we've zoomed over thanksgiving with our family we've reached out on on the phone and through text and been reached out to and there's been this incredible together thing that has been a blessing to us it's beautiful joshua said consecrate yourselves see so often when we face obstacles we get into strategy mode at least i do I pull on every strength that I have. I look for the resources around me. I look for other people. I I call people and kind of pull the audience and all of that. But, But as you said, a spiritual obstacle requires spiritual preparation. And so that's what was important in that moment. Not that they get all the logistics right, but that they consecrate themselves. And to consecrate yourself is to make a conscious, willing decision to dedicate your soul, mind, heart, and body to God. And only you can make the decision to do so. One writer says it this way, the utensils used in temple worship were considered consecrated. In other words, they were set apart for the exclusive use of God. They were devoted to his service. So consecration means dethroning yourself and enthroning Jesus as the Lord of your life. It's the the complete divestiture of all self-interest. It's giving God veto power. It's surrendering all of you to all of him. It's a simple recognition that every second of your time, every ounce of your energy, and every penny of your money is a gift from God and for God. And so consecration is an ever-deepening love for Jesus, a childlike trust in your Heavenly Father, and a blind obedience to the Holy Spirit. And this is what they were to do, a surrender of everything, laying it all down and say, we trust you, we're going to follow. And we've experienced that mm-hmm. this year, like that, that consecrating our, our lives. Um, and then you believe that God's going to come through. That he's going to do his, his part. And, you know, in, in many ways, God was doing that stretching bit for the Israelites. That in, invitation to watch the river for three days. He's like, I, I want to invite you to trust me, and I'm going to demonstrate my supernatural power to you. They were to behold and experience the wonders of Yahweh, the God they'd only heard about but never experienced. Wow. This was their opportunity to taste and experience supernatural God. It would be a marker point that they could look back on and remember one of those points that they could journal about. This is what it felt like. And then God came through. And throughout our journey, we keep encountering God's supernatural intervention. Yeah, I, I think the neatest thing about our current walk of faith and what it looks like for us right now is that we truly are experiencing Jesus in a fresh way. We're, I don't want to say we weren't before, but there's nothing like blowing up your life 
and getting rid of all of the support systems that we love, right? We create these just safe little spots for us. And when you remove that, it has to be God. And when it has to be God, then suddenly he shows up and you're like, this, this is what I've been longing for. We've had to really battle discouragement at different points. Uh, in, in early March, I, I was feeling really discouraged. Um, when we wake up in Asia, we wake up to a whole day of news from North America, plus all of the emails, plus all of the voicemails from concerned family members that we're living, where we're living, and all that kind of stuff. And I, 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 was, I was discouraged. <laughs> Darcy walked into our room one morning. He brings me coffee in bed every morning, and he's a champ for it. <laughs> and let's encourage him in this ministry. No, but, he no, has. Like, let's, let, no, but let's be true. Let's be truthful. If it's if it hasn't arrived by a certain time, <laughs> there, there are there are words that are said. So I'm, I'm a bit spoiled. I'm yeah. a bit spoiled. Anyway, so I was a little bit discouraged, and he came in the room and he said, Leanne. It's Breakthrough Thursday. And I went, Breakthrough Thursday? I, I have not heard about Breakthrough Thursday. And he goes, absolutely. Today, we are not looking at the problems. Today, we are looking for God. Instead of the lens of like everything that's not right in the world or everything we can't do in this moment, we're going to look at where God is at work and where he's asking us to participate. And it was like the lens just changed for us. And I'm like, I'm in. I'm in for Breakthrough Thursday. And honestly, it was a turning point for us where we went, no, who are we? Who are we? Who is God? And then from that lens, we move forward. Uh, yeah, so Breakthrough Thursday led to, like, Faith-Filled Friday. And uh, Supernatural Saturday. <laughs> and and um, um, Satisfied Sunday. <laughs> and, and Monday, okay. come on. Okay. Um, uh, Joe, Magnificent help Magnificent Monday. Magnificent. Moment Momentous, Momentous Monday. Momentous Monday, yeah. So it, anyway, it's, it's this thing. <laughs> okay, and Breakthrough Thursday was, was good, but let's, let's preface what happened earlier on Br Breakthrough Thursday. And earlier on Breakthrough Thursday, when I got up, I made a conscious choice because it, was, it just felt like bad news all over the place. I made a conscious choice to not engage there, but to instead, I went straight to God's word and I, I turned on some worship music, and I said, God, I, like, I, I need you. I need you to speak to me. I need you to, to ch change up the atmosphere in our home, and I just give this to you because I can't. It's too much for me. And that was... That's a consecration moment. That's a, like, as a, you're talking about that, that's a consecration moment of, like, here it is because I can't deal with it. And it's it's so interesting how when you turn off the other stuff and tune into what God is, is saying, how he'll speak. And that's been, I think, the key to our, our ministry year. Because so many of the things that we'd planned to do, oh, we, we couldn't you guys, do. guys, no. And so it's like, okay, here we are. What are we to do? And we'd pray, and God would give us a person to contact, a name to call. And it, things started to, to happen. And they happen in beautiful ways. Like, it, it's like I reached out to some former youth of our youth group up mm -hmm. in Terrace. I reached out to them on Facebook saying, I'm praying for you. And one of the girls came back within an hour and said, I'm looking at, at I'm, I'm facing thoughts of suicide. Uh, what do I do? Well, it, that was an easy answer for mm -hmm. me. It's like, this is who Jesus was. Do you remember? And I actually yeah. remembered some of the promises over her life as a teenager, and I said, come back to, to God. It was, it was powerful. So it's stepping into our city at that time, having to rely on supernatural God to speak to us was special because churches there are in the middle of protests. Uh, churches are splitting. Um, yeah. People are, are upset. Uh, the economy is, is shattered. Yeah. And so everybody's asking questions. And when you come 
in to that kind of environment saying, I believe that God wants to do something. I believe that God is with us. It, cha it changes things really quickly. Like, I, I think one of the things that I'm learning a lot through COVID, and I hope you are too. Like, I, I hope we don't get to the end of this and go, oh, wow, that kind of sucked. I hope we go, wow, that kind of sucked, but let me tell you about all of the things that God has actually built into my life. And uh, I'm learning that to be content in every moment. I am learning how to keep myself encouraged in the Lord. Yes, we do this for each other, even that you're here this morning. I mean, we hadn't been in corporate worship for months now. Uh, I just soaked it all up. Because what we were doing was we were singing the word of the Lord over each other. So we do that for each other. But at the end of the day, we are the ones and only us who can encourage ourselves in the Lord. And to kind of put that lens on and, and to discipline ourselves to go, you know what, I'm not... I'm not buying into the lie that the whole world is falling apart and, you know, that, you know, God isn't like, ugh. I'm not going to buy into it. And I'm going to ask myself, what is true in this situation? What is true? What are the facts here? And coming back to that place and living out of that place with the consecration piece. And then suddenly God shows up and suddenly it's like, oh, we're living the best life. We've had more conversations about Jesus with people who don't know Jesus this year than any other year of our lives. It's so fun because people are like, what's different about you? <laughs> and, and it spurs us to, to walk, walk, that, uh, walk that life of faith out. Okay, so you're going, okay, well, that's the pastors and that's the, that's the missionaries and that's them. But, but what about you? So here's the challenge for you this morning. Challenge number one, trust God. Mm -hmm. Trust him. Take, you know, take, take your eyes off the immediate and, and look at the big picture and see that, that God's here. And he's, he's moving. Um, consecrate yourselves. Maybe there's some spiritual practices that you used to do that you need to pick up again. If you're finding your mind filled with fear and anxiety, put your eyes on Jesus. Start your day out without turning on the news, <laughs> but actually open your Bible and read your Bible. Like, have, have that foundation and, and it actually changes this so that when you have to when you turn on the news later in the day you've got a, a foundation of truth yeah. in you to be able to handle what's going on in the world around you who can you do this life with mm -hmm. who's the community around you that encourages you that you can invite to encourage you and who you can encourage mm -hmm. don't be a don't isolate spiritually yeah. when we're being asked to isolate physically and then what is he inviting you to do mm -hmm. like in our little video that we sh you guys showed last week uh, with the word I'm going to try and say it Weiji <laughs> Weiji um, it's the word for, for crisis and in crisis that first symbol is, means danger. The second symbol means opportunity. And what are the opportunities that God is putting in front of you in the middle of this, this COVID season? Because there are opportunities. God doesn't stop working. He is always making a way forward. The one word that we haven't mentioned from that passage of scripture yet is the word tomorrow. Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow I'm going to do amazing things among you. I wonder what he is going to do. Live with that hope and that anticipation and that excitement that God has great things in store for you. Okay. Amen. Amen. Like the gospel. The gospel hits every part of our lives.
in the middle of a pandemic, the gospel, we just pull on that truth. We just receive it because it's so rich. But, uh, yeah, we want to pray for you. And, um, yeah, thank you, Lord. Lord, we're so grateful. We're so grateful about who you are. We're grateful that you never change. That it doesn't matter what happens in this world, around us, God. Um, you are the solid rock on which we stand. There's no shifting stands with you, Lord, because your character is true and your character is permanent. And you act out of your character in everything, Lord. And so we just come back to the truth of who you are, Lord. Thank you that you've empowered us by your spirit. And because of your spirit, we are alive in you. And we am, are empowered by your spirit to cooperate with you as you are at work all around us, Lord. So I just pray that each one of us would take time this week to consecrate ourselves that we would set ourselves apart and make that decision to, to set ourselves apart for your use, Lord. Help us as we learn more and more how to encourage ourselves and one another. Help us to encourage each other, Lord. Speak to us, God. Show us who needs a phone call, who, who needs an outreach of some sort. And God, may we just be obedient as we... Um, as we follow you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the hope. This isn't all there is. This is a glimpse. We thank you for the hope that you are reigning. That there's a bright future, God. And we put all of our hope into you and your promises, Lord. Mm. And God, we just believe that you have great things in store for this, this church and this community. And we pray that there would be a, almost a, as if you would shine your light on opportunities. Shine your light in places in this community where, where this group of believers can have an impact. And God, we pray that there would be an awakening to your Holy Spirit an awakening, uh, uh, like, oh, you're talking to me. <laughs> you're speaking to me. I, it's not just a Pastor Joe, but I, I just, I, I pray that there would be an awakening to the moving of your spirit uh, and that we would, we would listen and respond to your voice in faith. Thank you, Jesus.